ています。Role of Ultrasonogram in Chest Disease Part 3 Presented by Dr. Jul Mohsin Udin Assistant Professor NIDCH, Mohakali, Dhaka Presentation related to pleural thickening, pneumothorax, consolidation Index Pleural thickening slide 3 Differentiating pleural effusion from pleural thickening slide 5 Benign pleural thickening slide 11 Malignant pleural thickening slide 12 Pneumothorax slide 14 Seashore sign slide 18 Stratosphere sign slide 19 Differentiating between pneumothorax and bullus slide 21 Consolidation slide 22 Shred sign slide 28 Pleural thickening Pleural thickening is often defined as a focal lesion that is greater than 3 mm in width, arising from the visceral or parietal pleura with or without an irregular margin. Distinguishing pleural thickening from small effusions can be challenging, as both may appear hypoechoic on USG. Pleural thickening is not reliably detected on USG, unless it is 1 cm or more. It may be localized or generalized. Pleural thickening may be as many as 20% of anechoic lesions of the pleura are solid rather than fluid. Anechoic pleural thickening. Differentiating pleural effusion from pleural thickening. The quad sign is a static sonographic sign observed in pleural effusion. It consists of four lines representing the pleura, rib, fluid, and lung. This sign has a high sensitivity and specificity for pleural effusion, which, when simple, is itself anechoic. It may be helpful for detecting small pleural effusion from pleural thickening. Lack of movement relative to the chest wall with respiration is in favor of pleural thickening. Sinusoidal sign is absent here. The sinusoid sign is a dynamic sonographic sign, present when respiratory variation decreases the distance between the parietal and visceral pleura, when separated by a pleural effusion. Classically demonstrated in M mode, it is specific for the identification of a pleural effusion, as it may be absent with dense and heavily septated collections or pleural thickening. Color flow Doppler ultrasound can differentiate small pleural effusions from solid pleural abnormalities with sensitivity and specificity of 89% and 100%, respectively. The absence of a fluid color sign seen with color Doppler scanning are ultrasonographic evidence in favor of pleural thickening. A plain chest X-ray, postero anterior view, showed minimal left pleural based opacity, arrow. B grayscale of ultrasonogram showed anechoic lesion compatible with pleural effusion, arrow. C but color Doppler ultrasonogram showed the absence fluid color sign which means pleural thickening, arrow. A plain chest X-ray, postero anterior view, showed left pleural based opacity, arrow. B grayscale ultrasonogram showed anechoic lesion compatible with pleural effusion, arrow. C. Color Doppler ultrasonogram showed the presence of fluid color sign which means presence of pleural effusion, arrow. Benign pleural thickening having smooth surface A with minimal effusion B and minimal vascularity C. Malignant pleural thickening. A. Nodular thickening over the pleural surface indicate malignant pleural thickening. It was a metastatic lesion on diaphragmatic pleura. B. Malignant pleural thickening with an irregular pleural mass. It a case of mesothelioma. C. Malignant pleural thickening with hypochoic nodule. Found in mesothelioma. D. Malignant pleural thickening with invasion of chest wall. Knowledge about artifacts of the normal lung is fundamental for identifying or excluding a pneumothorax. As pleural air is usually located in the least dependent area, the patient is scanned in the supine position. A 3.5 to 5 MHz, curvilinear,
transducer is directed to the third or fourth intercostal space between the parasternal and midclavicular lines. Absence of lung sliding which is absence of horizontal movement of the lung relative to the pleural line. Absence of B lines. The presence of B lines is strong evidence against a pneumothorax, but their absence is not a sensitive sign of a pneumothorax. Absence of lung pulse and identification of the lung point are also consistent with pneumothorax. The lung point sign is a highly specific ultrasound sign of pneumothorax. It involves visualizing the point where the visceral pleura, lung, begins to separate from the parietal pleural, chest wall, at the margin of pneumothorax. In the absence of pneumothorax, the two pleural layers slide along each other creating a series of comet tail artifacts on ultrasound referred to as the sliding sign. However when air sits in the pleural space and separates the two pleural layers no sliding is seen, referred to as absent sliding sign. Seashore sign. M mode showing a granular pattern below the pleural line. This appearance of a sandy beach represents lung sliding and indicates absence of pneumothorax that is healthy lung. Stratosphere sign. MO showing a linear hyperechoic laminar pattern also called frozen echoes below the pleural line. Barcode or stratosphere sign typically found in patients with pneumothorax. In the pleural line the lung sliding is abolished and the sand-like appearance beneath the pleural line is replaced by parallel lines which is termed stratosphere or barcode sign. Normal lung. Pneumothorax. Seashore sign. Stratosphere sign. Differentiating between pneumothorax and bulla. In a study the sensitivity of the presence of pleural sliding in the diagnosis of bully was 97.50%, 86.84 to 99.94%, and specificity was 100.0%, 91.4 to 100.0%. Direct visualization of ultrasonographic pleural sliding can be a good tool for differentiating bully and pneumothorax. Presence of B lines has been reported to distinguish giant bully from pneumothorax. The reverberation artifact that produces the comet tail artifacts may be noticed in bullous disease. However, it is absent when the lung is collapsed as in pneumothorax and thereby helps to arrive at the diagnosis. Consolidation Consolidation is a non-specific term referring to a subpleural, echo-poor region or one with tissue-like echo texture. Consolidation can be present in a range of diseases, including pneumonia, pulmonary tuberculosis, pulmonary embolism, lung tumors, pulmonary hemorrhage, pulmonary edema, atelectasis, pulmonary contusion etc. Sonologically diagnosed alveolar consolidation should arise from pleural line, tissue-like pattern, superficial boundary should be pleural line, and deep boundary should be irregular. Consolidations of an inflammatory nature have an irregular profile, with a hypoanechoic heterogeneous structure and a branching bronchogram. Because consolidation appears isoechoic with the liver it has been referred to as lung hepatization. The margin around the consolidation as it abuts normal aerated lung is blurred and irregular. The size of a consolidation does not change with respiration, in contrast to a pleural effusion. Consolidation appears isoechoic. With the liver. Both air and fluid bronchograms may be seen within the consolidated lung. The echographic evidence of aerated bronchi, air bronchogram, indicates the presence of a consolidated lung field. In consolidation the lung volume is increased by fluid or tissue, but the bronchi are spared and retain their normal branching pattern. Air and fluid bronchograms. Within the consolidation, hyperechoic punctiform images can be seen corresponding to air in the bronchi, ISO called ultrasound air bronchogram. These air bubbles can be seen to move in the bronchi during respiration. Fluid bronchograms are seen as anechoic tubular structures and represent fluid-filled airways. 
fluid bronchograms, which are frequently observed in post-obstructive pneumonia, appear as anechoic tubular structures with hyperechoic walls without any color Doppler signal. Shred sign. The shred, fragmented parts, sign, also known as the fractal sign, is a static sonographic sign of lung consolidation. Consolidated lung tissue appears as a suppleural hyperchoic region that has an irregular, shredded, deep border, fractal line, abutting, bounding, normally aerated lung, which has echogenic artifacts. This sign is not seen in massive translator consolidation, where it is more difficult to appreciate the deeper border of the lung. It has high sensitivity and specificity. Thank you all. End of part minus 3. Role of ultrasonogram in chest disease part 3. Learning pulmonology.